everyone, I am Abigail Milano and before we start, I would like you all to guess our topic for today's video. As you can see, I have prepared a picture behind me and I know that you're all familiar with this. The four picks, one word, wherein you should be able to guess of what the picture wants to convey. Now, I'll give you some time to think of it. May I now hear your answer, students? Okay, that's correct. Our topic for today is all about women and violence. Before we start, I would like to inform you the learning outcomes that you should equip at the end of this chapter. The first one is, you should be able to identify the various forms of violence against women. Second, explain how even subtle forms of violence affect women. And lastly, articulate ways to prevent violence against women. Violence against women or VO is a topic that is difficult both to read about and to write about. Not only is the idea of causing harm to others a complicated idea to grasp, the denial of a certain type of violence by most culture is saddening. Why is this so? Violence against women is one of the most taboo topics in feminism and has a long history of contention. There are two reasons for this disagreement. First, some people assume that gender-specific violence does not exist. Second, those who witness and recognize violence against women view it as normal and unavoidable gender-specific violence is just part of how the world is and there is nothing one can do to change it. There is an incident concerning violence against women regarding work, which is sexual harassment in the workplace. In education, sexual harassment and rape, and family life like incest, spousal abuse, and female genital mutilation. <laughs> now, let's define violence against women. According to Magna Carta of Women in the Philippines, it is any act of gender-based violence that results in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering to women, including threats of such acts, coercion, or arbitrary deprivation of liberty, whether occurring in public or in private life. So this chapter will be discussing four types of violence as defined in the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Law of 2003 namely physical, psychological, economic, and sexual abuse. So there are other forms of sexual violence such as rape, marital rape, and incest. So in rape, it is defined as force or coerced penetration of the vulva or anus using a penis or other parts of an object. So rape is considered rape even if the penetration is minimal. So, a successful rape is called attempted rape. If more than one person commits rape on any person, it is called gang rape. So, assaulting other sexual organs can be considered sexual violence including forced contact between sex organs or the mouth and penis, vulva or anus. So, the lack of consent is essential to sexual violence. A person may be unable to give consent due to being drunk, drugged, or incapacitated. So those who lack the comprehension to understand the ramifications of their decision, such as children and persons with disabilities, cannot give consent for sex. So with rape comes the removal of free will and power of the victim, so attacking the dignity of the person. Next is the marital rape. So it includes acts that are covered by rape, although it occurs between a married couple this happens when your husband forced you to do sex activities. So in some areas in the Philippines, marital rape is not acknowledged as violence or rape by the victim. So the victim's family and more often than not, the community where the crime was committed. So a woman who experienced marital rape may be too ashamed to come forward as she feels that her issue is one that is private in nature. So others who do, however, may not even pursue their case against their husband because they have supposedly resolved the issues on their own. So marital rape is also similar to issues concerning domestic violence. So, which shall be discussed in the next section. So, the last one is incest. It refers to sexual acts done between family members or a closely related person. 
The root of incest comes from the violent, violation or trust of a victim on his or her assailant. So it concerns so it concerns the lack of power in which victims lose their voice to speak up regarding the abuse because they may not know that what is happening to them is wrong. So as in the case of young children or because the perpetrator threatens the victim to stay quiet about the interaction, victims may feel that they must fulfill the elder's wish of sexual acts for survival because the latter is taking care of them. So, in physical violence, this is an act attempting to cause or resulting in pain and or physical injury to another person. This includes being beat, burnt, kicked, punched, beaten, maiming or killing, or the use of objects and weapons. So next is the psychological violence. It involves causing harm to a victim through the use of mutilation, resulting in mental diminishing her value because of her socially constructed role or judging how she marital infidelity is also considered a form of psychological violence against a woman why because the supposed role of a woman in marriage includes being a good and a faithful wife infidelity may make her feel that she has either little or no worth for her partner lowering her self-esteem so another one is forcing a woman to witness a form of violence such as physical, psychological, sexual abuse against another family member is also psychological violence. Making her view graphic material or watch pornography she is not comfortable with can likewise be considered abuse. So the third one is economic abuse. It is the deprivation of a woman's financial independence so this form of abuse can be realized through explicit acts such as denying women the right to use property or materials that are legally hers, destroying her things, solely controlling her money or property, or threatening to deprive her of financial support. So more subtle forms of economic abuse involve the removal of support from one's partner, having her father, spouse, or relative disallow her from participating in the labor market, or stopping her from creating her own income generating project. So the last one is sexual violence. Sexual violence is defined as the forcing of unwanted sexual acts upon a person. It is not limited to the act of copulation. Any act that is sexual in nature can be considered sexual violence. Sexual violence ranges from rape, marital rape, incest, sexual abuse of children to sexual objectification of women and children. Molestation and the attacking or unwanted touching of a woman's private parts are included in this definition. So marital rape and attempted rape constitute sexual violence. Examples of forced sexual activities include being forced to watch somebody masturbate, forcing somebody to masturbate in front of others, forced and safe sex, sexual harassment, and abuse related to reproduction. So such as forced pregnancy, forced abortion, for sterilization and female genital mutilation. Good day everyone, I'm here to continue the discussions about the women's and violence. So let's proceed to the sexual harassment. So first, what is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment is a specific form of sexual violence that occurs outside one homes. The sexual act may not necessarily be forced or take a physical form. Manipulation, intimidation, and blackmail can be used to encourage someone into having sex or performing sexual act. Sexual harassment, it is an issue because it is a form of gender-based violence which seriously inhibits women's ability to enjoy rights and freedom on the basis of equality with men. So, in short, sexual harassment, it is unlawful harass a person because of that person's sex. The Philippines Anti-Sexual Harassment Law of 1995 defines sexual harassment as the demand of sexual act or the favor in institution, wherein the person who demands the act in a moral incidency or influence over the person being solicited. On sexual harassment, the UN Women Watch has a list of possible acts of sexual harassment. This include verbal, physical, and nonverbal incidents. So, the first one is the verbal incidents involved 
whistling at someone, catcalling, making sexual comments about the person's body, sexual innuidos, turning work discussions into sexual conversations, telling sexual jokes or stories, asking about sexual fantasies, preferences, or history, asking personal questions about social or sexual life, making kissing sounds, howling and smoking lips, making sexual comments about a person's clothing, anatomy, or looks. So, the last one is repeatedly asking a person who is not interested and telling lies or spreading rumors about individual's personal sex life. So, we have also the nonverbal incidents include the following. The first one is the staring or letting at someone, looking someone up and down, blocking one spot, following the person, stalking, giving unwanted gifts, gesturing sexually, licking one lips, and the last one is the throwing kisses. So let's proceed to the violence against women in public spaces. So we have here the street harassment. Street harassment is the sexual harassment that occurs in public space. A prior relationship between the assailant and the victim is not required. The harassment may involve cat calls, shouting of sexual obscenities, unwanted sexual gestures, plucking a person's spot, incidents, exposure, groupings, and the like. These actions create the hostile public environment and women are mostly the victims. The next is pornography. Pornography may be the most controversial issues in feminist circle. It is not defined as the presentation through publication, exhibition, cinematography, in design, shows information technology, or by whatever means. Of the person engaged in real or stimulated explicit sexual activities or any representation of the sexual parts of person for primarily sexual purposes. The next one is the prostitution. Prostitution is defined as any act, transaction, scheme, or design involving the use of person by another for sexual intercourse or less use, conduct in exchange for money, profits, or any other considerations. So we have here the sex tourism. It is used as sexual services as a selling point of the tourism in which person may go to specific location to experience sexual activities. The next one is escort services are also considered form of the sex tourism. So we have also the sexual exploitation. It is the participation of women in the sex industry, prostitution or pornography because of force or intimidation. Next one is the sex trafficking. It is involved the recollection of women from one place to another without them knowing where are they going. These women often agree to go these places because they have been promised employment by a legitimate employer. The next one is spiritual violence. Spiritual force is the form of violence against women that uses religion or spiritually to discredit, harm, or disempower them. It is happened when powerful religious leaders use supposedly religious ideologies to control and the rule over women. So we have here the sex slavery. It is a condition in which one human being is owned by another and is forced or otherwise coerced into working in the sex tree. The next one is comfort women or comfort girls. Were women and girls forced into sexual slavery by imperial Japanese army in occupied countries, the territories before the during World War II, the term comfort women is the translation of Japanese ian fu, which literally means comforting, consoling women. So as you can see, we have here the reproductive or medical abuse. Other less known forms of vow have to do these issues related to having or not having children. Women may be forced to get pregnant, use contraceptives, or undergo abortions. Another form of violence is the withholding of information about safe pregnancy and contraceptives and childbirth. 357 medical abuse can also happen on women. 
also abuse of women in intimate relationships. Women who are abused by their parents are called victims of intimate partners, violence, or abuse. The abuse of women in intimate relationships is seen as a major health issue that affect a woman physically and emotionally. It is also a causes psychosocial harm. So good day everyone, I am the last reporter who will going to tackle the remaining topic which is the other form of violence into the prevention and response. So to proceed, let's proceed to domestic violence. First, what is domestic violence? Domestic violence is a violence committed by someone in the victim's domestic circle. This include partners and ex-partners, immediate family member, other relatives, and family and friends. The term domestic violence is used when there is a close relationship between the offender and the victim. So when we are using domestic violence, it occurs within a home where an unequal power relationship between the victim and the perpetrator exists. This form of vow may occur in relationship between husband, wife, mother, child, aunt or uncle and child, grandparent and child, adult son and mother, or other relative than, and younger relative, gathered or due to an unequal gender relationship, an act of violence may also be considered domestic violence if it's committed by an adult male and relative to a woman who may be older, of the same age, or younger than him. So let's proceed to the impact of vow. So the impact of the vow contains the health consequences which is Vow is a global phenomenon deeply rooted in certain culture. The UN has framed vow as a health issue to make it easier to address harmful practices and beliefs that could otherwise affect women. Vow has a long-term and short-term effects on women physically, emotionally, and sexually. It can lead to unwanted pregnancy, unwanted miscarriage, sexual transmitted disease, and other sexual reproductive health issues. Women who experience vow may develop mental health problems such as post-traumatic stress disorder, which is the PTSD, eating disorders, and also sleep disorder. Which is, vow is really that important to women who experience or suffer to this kind of traumatic event. So, let's proceed to the next topic which is the loss on vow. So, to begin with, so loss on vow. How is it important vow loss? Vow limits human development and also jeopardizes women's health and curbs their capacity to participate in social development. Working women productivity decreases due to frequent absence resulting from vow. Vow is responsible for one out of every five healthy days of life lost to women of reproductive age. And according to the nationalization of women's rights in the Philippines begun in the post-martial law period, gender equality is enshrined in the 1987 Constitute and women are, in theory, protected from discrimination based on their gender before the inclusion of gender equality in the Constitution, sexual harassment was not recognized. <clears throat> the law had also given the husband the, the right to control a couple's property. A couple had a declared psychological incapacity to null their marriage. Legal separation could only be arranged if there was proven repeated abuse in relationship. Abandonment, if proven, was also a ground of annulment. Other forms of violence such as verbal abuse or physical abuse were not covered by the law. So let's proceed in prevention and response. Many of the excuses that are passed of justification of vow are actually misconceptions. These excuses may involve the female biology and women's socially constructed roles. One may hear the excuse that women are naturally weak, hence they are more likely to be abused. Others may justify that men are just naturally aggressive. Vow also persists as a result of interaction of ideology and belief system, social structure, community patterns, and personal history. Some cultural or traditional beliefs or values can even under undermine human rights.
4. Laws against vow, if properly enforced, can be become tools against these pervading societal issues of violence. The enforcement of vow laws is also focused on responding to vow rather than stopping it from happening. Preventive measures are lacking even among organizations that are supposed to help the victims of vow. To address fully the consequences of violence and the needs of victims, survivors, all sectors of society must condemn vow in all forms. To address this form of violence, which is may depend on one's location, different agencies should respond properly in educating people about vow, its cause and its effect on one's health. Supporting national efforts and groups that handle vow cases and care for victims can help tackle the issue at its mood. Vow is a very personal issue. The stigma associated with reporting vow is a major issue that hinders these cases from being addressed. It is every citizen's responsibility to foster a culture that makes vow unacceptable. And that is the last topic and I hope you learned something about our report and so that's all and thank you